Everybody, Scrap and Salvage here. Just got back from a pick, found some great stuff. Let's show you what we found. Found a few clothing items uh, and found kind of this little throw blanket. Thought it was kind of cool with little goats on it. Has some stain issues. Hopefully it'll come out, but that, like the color, it's kind of fun. This was uh, just one of those buys that uh, it was unique. This looks like something uh, like uh, Noah's Ark has this like skirt thing. I don't know. I buy weird when I see it. Kind of like your Sunday school teacher's a little outfit. Kind of cheesy, but uh, sometimes cheese sells. I found this cool like 60s, uh, looks like bar cloth, uh, Hawaiian shirt. Love the colors. I mean, this thing is vibrant. Really good condition and just a vibrant, cool shirt. So we know where they spent their holidays. This is a, a terry cloth, kind of get out of the shower, get out of the pool, zip up. I've sold a bunch of these in the past. If you see these, pick them up. Um, they do sell. And, uh, you know, it just dries you off, just lounge, kind of cool. This is a pretty big one. Um, kind of unique, kind of 70s, 80s pattern on it. Thought that was fun. Found some hand-knit sweaters. I don't know, the colors, just, I was drawn to the colors. And, um, and the season being a little colder than normal, maybe these will sell. Kind of cool, handmade, fun stuff. This looks like more of a ski sweater. This family was into skiing. They had a bunch of skiing stuff. This is uh, made in France, Montant. I don't know. Kind of cool. Aldo Romano. This is made and styled in Italy for Aldo Romano. I liked it because it had a little skier. Has some little stuff on the, the arm. You want to look like you're a vintage skier, snowboarder person. Maybe that's for you. And then found more of just a casual digger, 100% rainy wool. I think this is that's German. I think the family was German, like I said. Has some condition issues, a few holes, but um, definitely smell that cedar chest. Moving on here, um, found some, some really good Christmas stuff. This one's like your little elf on a shelf guy. These are probably, you know, 30s, 40s, little Santas, little guys, especially with this kind of like uh, pipe cleaner looking stuff. Um, good find, but uh, wh why I bought the box? This is really old, like 1890s, 1900s. I saw these and I'm like, you know, this blue Santa's in postcards is really sought after. Um, it's harder to find the blue, Santa and blue, but these are really old. Um, it looks like they just kept using them on their Christmas pack packaging presents and whatnot. So I'm not going to get too much into that, but this is a really old Christmas tree topper from that same kind of era. Rough shape, but, um, you know, this kind of stuff doesn't last very long. I'm not going to get too much into this, but I'll show you a couple of these things. This is one of those like German birds. Usually has a little tail clip on thing here these do have value I've seen them go for like 50 bucks um but the one guy in here that's probably the gem of the lot is this santa clip-on this early 1890s and 1900 santa clip-on um this is, i've never found one before but uh, a rare piece really cool and then just opening some of these christmas ornaments you can just tell by this you know by the styling of it really old and uh this is the oldest Christmas I've ever found. I found a couple pieces here and there. Uh, what else? A little acorn. Not sure how old that one is, but still definitely has some era, uh, age to it. I mean, and this cool old one as well. That's definitely old. So this little, I don't know what you call that. Kind of almost like a tooling feel to it. Has a little like wreath with a little bell ornament into it. So there's a few of these. Some of them um, are, are broken, but for the most part, they're there. And then found some more, probably more like 50s ornaments. Um, this one was kind of cool. I believe these are mercury glass. Just by the little pontal mark after they blew it. Um, but uh, definitely collectible. People like to collect and put up old Christmas. Probably bring some more out We're closer to the next Christmas time. We're just barely out of the season now. That was a fun find. Always picking that up throughout the year. Uh, moving on, found some cool dolls. Um, I've said in my videos before, my wife and I collect the doll heads and just the ones that are like in these plain clothes. This one was pretty pretty clean, has some condition use, but the crustier the better for these doll heads. And uh, this one was pretty nice, but the gem of the lot here is this German-made um, bisque doll. This is a pretty old antique doll. And I saw that and I'm like, hmm, I'll take a gamble on it. But it's a Max Handiwerk Bebe Eli and made in Germany. So number 286 six and three quarters. So I didn't, I, sh I probably should have looked at the, the body was there, but I, you know, it was a bunch of parts and pieces in this box. So I just grabbed the head. And one of our favorites here is this doll. Looks like it has leprosy. This is crusty old doll. Looks like it's got melted somehow. This is composite, I believe. 
and uh, just a real creepy look to it. Those are always the best. And this had a little cute little fun on missing stuff, but uh, just thought that was neat. Had to grab it. This hanky, fast color hanky. These always seem to sell for me, so I always grab one. I see them. A couple cool 50s, 60s ties with some cool looks to them. It's like this little circle pattern in the middle of that. Some of them aren't the best condition. This one's cool. It has a little like a no, it's actually look like an onion bulb. Or it can be construed as a Valentine's Day type. Maybe it's both. And this is like a souvenir um, pillow. Uh, just I found them just in the just the case itself. It was the first time I found actually one that's been stuffed. But Fort Sheridan, it's like World War II, Illinois, it was sent. Usually they would souvenir send back home to mom and dad. And lovingly yours, son Gary. So kind of cool. I've never seen them signed, but this is the first time I've seen it stuffed. A little memento from the wartime. I thought that was sweet. But this, this isn't marked, but it looks Italian to me, like Batasi kind of era. Not too sure, it's got some gunk on it, but um, these do have some value, especially if they're um, certain ones and signed, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's Italian. Mid-century cup set of six, love these, love these. Um, they have a really nice kind of a plastic textural coating to them. Um, just have a great feel. Anytime I find glass or I always pick it up. We'll, we'll probably keep those for our own little collection. It's a great color set. And then moving on down here, I found these, uh, um, I believe they're ski glasses with the mirror on them, but um, I think these are made in Taiwan. And then I'm not sure where this one's made, but still pretty good nick, even though this one looks like it's worn more, but yeah, I can't see a name. This one made in France. So uh, really cool. This was fun. This little kid's uh, cowboy, the two six shooters, cowboy little uh, watch. You know, definitely kids made, it's really cheap, falling apart, made in Japan, but just a cool little piece of little toy history, I guess. I just thought it was neat. Found some really cool brass locks by Herd. This one's Herd, Detroit, USA. I didn't realize I got home. It's actually United States Navy USN right there. Um, I have a couple others, but this was cool. Cool, fine, good brass lock. And I'm not sure the brand yet on this. Uh, it's got like an S on it. I'm trying to think, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But, um, Anytime you can find little cool brass locks, you know, they're not, some of them have high dollar, but most of them are just, you know, they do bring a little money, command a little money. Found some skeleton keys, found this cool assortment of uh, uh, fountain pens, a couple pencils. This was probably one of my favorites. It's a combo. It's got the pencil on one end and then the fountain pen on the other. Um, I'll need to get a loop out to see if there's gold on that, but uh, just, uh, you know, the way they made these things. And the effort they took into making this nice marbling and the quality is just so cool. I mean, pens, they made them as a statement piece back in the day. And uh, this one needs a little cleaning. It's got a rubber band that's been kind of glued to it or heated up next to it. But this is by Schaefer. Just love the look of this one. And uh, yeah, this is a fun find. Fountain pens have some good value to them. And if you can find them, pick them up. Um, this is, I don't know the material on this. It's probably similar to that celluloid or educate me if you know. Um, I thought this was better and I turned it over when I got home and it had been broken. But I have a few, few, a number of these knives that I've collected over the years. Just like this one. Looks like a little bowling pin. A little souvenir pocket knife. This is a little military wings. I'm not 100% what the uh, specifics on this are or what branch. But um, it's kind of cool. I believe it's, yep, sterling silver. Found that in a little jar full of a bunch of little knickknacks. Love it when that happens. Moving on down here, got this little Jack and Jill Jungle Jinx. It's this little like metal. I don't know if this was in here before or what, but it's got all these little boxes in there. Kind of cool, definitely old. Thought it was cool. Nice little patch, Centurions, 1951. Collection of uh, probably 40s, 30s, 40s um, lighters. Yeah, this one's got this great little uh, decorative thing to it. This one's gas, I believe. I'm not sure how it... Oh, there you go. Butane. And then... Uh, fun looking these up. Lighters have a lot of value, especially if they're silver. Sold some. That brings some good money. It's got a cool... The size is really great on this one. Love that. Some really, uh, some generic advertising ones. Cool cigarettes, and I'm not sure what this one is. The low gas, low tar. Fact. Yeah. Found this lot of um, 
believe these are made in Mexico. These little, it's feather art and feather and painting art of birds. Just the time it takes to, to do this, it's just so cool. And I uh, just thought these were really neat. Let's have a great look to them. Got some ducks, a peacock maybe. So you could uh, frame these, put them up on your wall or I don't know what, but just a cool little piece. I thought that was neato. Found this military hat. It's got feathers all over it. It needs a big cleaning. HBT herringbone weave pattern on it. Looks World War II era. I'm not seeing any markings yet, but uh, kind of fun. This is like a, I want to say it's like a robe kimono kind of thing. Um, but I love the embroidery work in it. And uh, I'm not sure if this is true, but I'm assuming if this guy was in World War II, maybe he, he or she brought it back from the war. It just has this really great embroidery. Doesn't Not in the best shape, but... Um, you know, the right person might might enjoy that. So just the work it takes to do all that, it's impressive in itself. So pretty cool piece there. And last but not least, found this uh, mixing bowl. It pays to mix with Vox Brothers Tabor SD, South Dakota, I believe. Um, but this cool, almost like uh, drip. It's not drip glaze. I'm not. I'm not uh, uh, familiar what they call that exactly, but. Um, can't find any information on this so if any of you out there know uh this brand and make and any, any info on that that would be appreciated sending that along but uh cool find this was the haul today this was a really fun pick to get out there and dig uh stuff was kind of everywhere little nooks and crannies my favorite kind of sales and uh hopefully more of those are out there in the future we'll see you next time <laughs>